a lot of countries around the Asia Pacific uh, region were nowhere as good as India. And the very, very poor countries like Bangladesh, Nepal, uh, Tajikistan, these uh, countries had nothing. So a very powerful uh, organization and one of the oldest charities uh, in, in London uh, wanted to support the Spastic Society and adapt. And, uh, and they're a very good group of people. Uh, they're sort of part of the Victorian culture of doing uh, free service. And so they're very altruistic and philanthropic. So they chose us and, and I like them very much, their whole attitude. And that's how we started the community initiatives in inclusion uh, with people from 22 countries for the last 16 years. It was actually called the Community Based Rehabilitation Course. That was held in London and people from the third world countries would go there and learn about coming back to third world countries and setting up community services. A lot of the women stayed on there and there was a disconnect because if you want to know about poverty in India and Pakistan and Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, you have to come here and see it. You don't understand it over there. So Dr. Lourdes, uh, Dr. Wills, Prue Chalker with the Institute of Child Health got together and said, we need to relocate the course. And it came to India and we started that. Some of these ladies now, for instance, uh, Frances Maud, she's an advisor. She herself, I mean, all of them come from a hugely privileged families, but they're all steeped in that old Victorian philosophy of the privileged must give to the underprivileged. I come out to adapt in India um, at the end of every course for two weeks to discuss with the students, to do an evaluation with the students, and to be on the assessment panel for their presentations. learn the language and they have to uh, lose their fear of an audience and such a vast stage and uh, also to think systematically in terms of uh, what is the thesis and to give a brief background of their culture you know presentation is basically a theater art and so far in the last 35 years it has produced results. The first year it was a local course. We had people from Bombay. Second year it became a national level course. We had people from all across India. By that time, the Women's Council, Dr. Francis Moore, who you met, uh, was looking to support women. And it became an Asia Pacific course. I came in as the training advisor from the Women's Council with the funds to make this happen. Students come from all over the Asia Pacific region. And we've also had some students who come from the Middle East, from both Jordan and Iraq. It is a very, very stringent admission process where we send out invitations to NGOs, invite applicants, then the team at ADAPT reviews each application, post which every participant, irrespective of which country it comes from, is interviewed on Skype, where we gauge the passion of the person, the background of the person, the interest of the person and then the course begins. They stay in the centre here for three months and have a lot of, of input from many of the faculty here to many, many modules on disability 
and specifically on community and inclusion. The module contains, you know, right from the technical aspect of what is disability. Every disability is, uh, you know, explained. And like ADAPT here, we are with mixed abilities. It's, it's not only autism or only cerebral palsy. We are with mixed abilities. And we use the expertise, expert in this particular, uh, whichever area, that expert comes and takes up this module. So you have models where disability is explained. Then you have models on the how it is to be taken for, what are the barriers in it, what are the medical you know, aspect of it. So the medical module, the social module at different stages is, is explained. Then you have a psychologist who talks from psychology. Then you have parents who are dealt with disabilities also given that module. Then you will have the practical training what on the job, what are you expected to do? CIR has got four modules and one of them is a community-based rehabilitation, which means they prepare the participants to go into the community and work in the rural areas. Now, when you're working in the rural sector, fancy teaching aids and toys are not really available because they're not even affordable. So the participants are taught how to make teaching aids and puppets using scrap material like boxes which can be used for numbers, a dice which can be used for numbers. A box has been made and filled up with stones which is used for sound identification. So from all the aspects of a personality, whether I mean the, the disabled or otherwise, is taken into consideration. And that is how it becomes a holistic sort of a program. to our students are women. The Women's Council funds a women's, the opportunity for women to be, to be trained. They're the ones that are mostly working with children with disabilities and uh, taking inclusion forward. My name is Samdin and uh, I'm a Tibetan from Mirik, which is in Darjeeling. And I'm a mainstream teacher. Uh, my experiences here has, it has made me see the society in a very minute we. In Tajikistan, we have very, how say, powerful women, of course, and a lot of NGOs were set up in Tajikistan, but still I want to make also some more change for my side. All of the women, when we've asked them, have said that the greatest thing that they've uh, gained from the course has been confidence. Confidence in doing the work that they are, that they are engaged in in their own countries. There's a difference between rich people and poor people, of course. And uh, poverty itself is a disability. Yes. And it's like so connected. Yes. That's why inclusion is not only about including children with disabilities, but including children who are left with out poverty, in the society, yes. like the poor, uh, children, underprivileged children. And uh, in some places, there is gender inequality. So there's the girl child who does not get education in comparison to the boy child. So inclusion is about including everyone and not just about including disability. How was it, the CII course? It was hard work? Uh, no. <laughs> not too hard work. <laughs> yeah, too hard. <laughs> what about you, Ashley? Yeah, it was kind of... Yeah. <laughs> it was hard work. Yeah. <laughs> I joined Nagaland State Disability Forum in the year 2015 as a disability activist. I'm the general secretary of our organization. Together we are working for our rights. We've got therapists, social workers, psychologists, researchers, disabled activists, parents, teachers, heads of schools, all professionals under one course. This is not only for inclusive education, but they learn about inclusion and they learn how to conduct, conduct different activities with and for disabled children and people. For example, they learn music, dance and yoga sessions. Secondly, this course uh, helps them and enhance their um, understanding and knowledge about community-based inclusive development. And they learn uh, how to make a social inclusion for people with disability. At the policy level, I did two days orientation program with 17 government departments. And after this orientation, all the departments decided that we will celebrate once in a year a happy day for persons with disabilities. So you can imagine now the movement is getting strong. And the 
critical mass that we want to reach in this country is growing. This year, there was a meeting that there are five or six countries who have sent us many, many participants. Now, let us look at these countries becoming the hubs, the regional hubs. We are going to be a ADAPT partner hub where we want to actually assist the CII past um, participants in trying to also do further training. We're very much looking forward to being a hub of these activities and uh, we hope that we will uh, 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 you know, bring in students to do some wonderful volunteering work. Since a few years we have been looking out for an excellent course for our our staff members and the only place we found, the best place we found, was ADAPT. As we are working in, in, in inclusive education, um, we, we have uh, found uh, in uh, ADAPT uh, Mumbai, uh, which is um, really, really great. That these organizations that have sent so many people become our nodal partners. They screen, they support, they mentor and we spread inclusion. from the twins which was born four years ago and experiences stress and deprivation after the birth. It's already three three months and uh, one week but I never felt my myself alone with my child because uh, all of our CIA participants they're very 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 beautiful girls and all of our uh, CIA teachers how they helped me with Al Amin for me, I never felt that I am in the foreign countries, I am in the stranger countries. I think all of ADAPT was with Al Amin and he loves all of them. And I, I know that all of people all ADAPT also love him. They leave their family, their friends, and then they come here. And uh, in the beginning, they are very nervous. And so we give them that comfort, that love, and make them realize, like, don't have to worry about anything. We make sure that they don't miss their family and they are attentive towards the course. They all live here and you have eight, nine countries living together. It's like a mini UN, you know. They come with their traditions, with their challenges. Everyone shares their opinions, their views, their suggestions.
even though uh, they have tears in their eyes and it's very difficult for all of us to take that scene.